The second computer I've ever had was an IBM Aptiva. Unfortunately, I don't remember the model number or the specs, but the reason why I bring this up is that it was the first device I ever had to contain a CD player. As a 10 year old, it blew me away with its potential. Whether it be listening to an old Offspring CD or playing games, I loved messing around on that PC. One of the first games I played on it was one that took advantage of this new media source, The Adventures of Hyperman. I never finished it as a kid, as I always got stuck near the end of the game, but playing it again now as I'm a bit more matured, and I was able to get through it with minimal issues. In Hyperman, you play as the titular Hyperman, who had imprisoned evil Blob and Trobe and his comical sidekick Chaos into outer space. An object flies through the prison cell and allows him to escape to Earth, and Hyperman teams up with super teen genius Emma to find a way to capture them again. In order to do this, you travel between a few different areas on the island map, Solving puzzles and finding items to put in the trap set up to rocket and trobe and chaos back into space. Now, I suck at adventure games. As much as I really enjoy them, I usually can't get very far. Hyperman could be considered an intro to adventure games, because I was actually able to get all the way through it. It has a lot of educational elements to it, so that might be part of it. You'll learn how catapults work, how genetic mutations occur, and play around with reflections on mirrors, and all of these are needed to solve puzzles. There's only about a half dozen of them to solve though, so as you can imagine, it does not take long to complete. In fact, when playing this game for the first time in probably 20 plus years, I was able to fully run through it in about an hour. This is probably good for kids though, as it helps keep their interest. Some of the puzzles allow you to keep progressing into the game if you can't figure them out, like the catapult one. There are some of them, like the mutation puzzle, that may make you a bit frustrated, since you have to keep messing with humidity, water, and time advancement until you find a monster that can take on Entrobe's new creature. However, a bit of trial and error will allow you to get through it. The game's interface is minimal. Inventory is pretty much only used for figuring out which lures you have for Entrobe's trap. And in order to save or load, you have to enter the lab, go into the left room, and then click on the file cabinet. You don't get any kind of indication on whether an overwrite was done properly, so there is that. But again, considering that the game is only about an hour long, saving probably won't be needed, as there's no way to die either. One other minor gripe that I do have about the saving and loading structure is that you can't just go into the file menu in order to load. Instead, you have to start the game, skip the opening scenes manually, walk to the left, and open the file cabinet in order to load the desired game. Seems a bit overkill, but again, since the game isn't too lengthy, you may not notice it. But I remember I definitely did when I was a kid, so I figured I'd mention it now. Speaking of skipping scenes, one other minor gripe that I have is that Hyperman and Emma have to slowly trudge off the screen in order to go to the next area. You can't click or press any keys to speed them up, but you do have an option to turn off the majority of the walking animations. Granted, that's literally the only option in the menu available other than quitting, so there's that. Overall, the sounds are done very well. There's a noticeable drop in speech quality when you're actually playing the game, but in the animated videos, it feels like you're truly watching a Saturday morning cartoon. The animation is done extremely well, and apparently the game actually did have a cartoon series on CBS in the early 90s. That explains the amazing quality, but back to the sounds. One thing I don't understand is that oftentimes Hyperman will be speaking, and random sound effects will start to play in between words. Demo. Let's go. All right, you're right. Let's go. Where are we going? I don't understand why this happens, as it feels so out of place, even for a superhero that comes from a different planet. It won't kill the mood or flow of the game or anything, but it definitely strikes me as unnecessary. Even with these minor nitpicks, The Adventures of Hyperman is a fantastic game. I actually laughed a few times at the humor, and the seriousness of Emma helps offset the goofy nature of Hyperman. The fact that there were some educational moments didn't even steer me away, and even I learned about catapults and how awesome they are. Joking aside, pretty much anyone can enjoy it, if even to just watch the excellently done cartoon videos. I guess you can kind of cheat and just watch them by directly loading the video files from the disc, but oh well. I ran the game perfectly fine on an old XP build, so if you have one laying around, feel free to try to hunt this one down, because although it's really short, it's still a fun time for what it gives you. Final score, 5 out of 7. This is Reaper.
Happy fragging.